close-up look at all your Concho Valley High School football, this is Inside the Game, sponsored by Mitchell Automotive Group. What a night of high school football. Welcome to Inside the Game. I'm Jaden Hart, your guide through a busy and crazy week eight of the season. Three teams entered the night unbeaten in District 2-3A Division II, Brady, Sonora, and Grape Creek. And it just so happened that the Bulldogs and Broncos met up tonight. Brady trying to get one step closer to their first district title since 09. Sonora looking to get back to those winning ways of old. Second quarter is where we pick it up. Hayden Baronet rolling to his right. Throws a laser, but it's picked off by Fernando Gonzalez. He hits the corner. Pick six touchdown. Broncos up 8-0 after the two-point conversion. But... Brady answers back. Under four to play in the first half. Zeke Jones around the outside beats the Broncos defense. Sonora, though, still in the lead, eight to seven after the extra point. Broncos trying to get in the red zone. They do. Jaime Butron with the read option keeper. That's the right decision. Through the Bulldogs defense, they go into the half with a 14 to seven lead. And the Broncos knock off Brady tonight, 28 to 22 Sonora stays perfect in district play. How about the other unbeaten team in the district? Great Creek hosting Ballinger Eagles looking to prove they belong in the district title conversation. And in the second quarter, they're already up six to zero. Check it out. Isaiah Barones making guys miss left and right. He's in for the Great Creek touchdown. Eagles up 12 to zero going into half. Third quarter, Ballinger clawing its way back. Briley Clinton fakes the handoff, finds Blake Collum wide open. Ballinger on the scoreboard, 12-6. But check out this run by Bronis. Four guys can't bring him down. He's in for the Eagle touchdown, 20-6 Great Creek. And how about this? The Eagles take down Ballinger tonight, 20-13. Their first win over the Bearcats since 2016. And our Cassie Munoz caught up with Eagles head coach Tanner Teal for the big win. Hey, Jaden, I'm at Eagles Stadium. I'm here with Coach Tanner Teal of the Grape Creek Eagles. Coach, run me through tonight's game, uh, if you would. Well, uh, we came out, took the ball, drove it down, scored. Um, bad snap on the extra point. Um, came back, we scored again, held them 12-0 at halftime. Very, very good defensive first half for us. Uh, kind of our MO since we started district is, is run the ball, run the clock out, try to keep their offense off the field. We did a really good job of that the first half. Second half, a little bit tougher. They made some adjustments. Still, we, we, we drove down. We got a much needed score. Defense stood up, two, two goal line stands. Uh, just a great game. Absolutely, and, and talk about your defense, you know, to be able to help hold these guys back um, for the first half and then, you know, also in the second half. T tell me, what was it, what was the key for the defense tonight? Um, a really good game plan. I mean, our, our coaches work Saturdays, Sundays, throughout the week. We watch a lot of film. Uh, we just knew what they were going to run, and uh, we prepared for it. Our kids had a really good week of practice. And they were just prepared, and they, they executed. You know, how does it feel to be undefeated in district right now? It feels great. You know, a lot of people, you know, we, we've talked about it. Uh, the last few weeks is, is we've kind of embraced the underdog role, and uh, nobody kind of expects this from us. And so we kind of use that to our advantage. I, th I feel like a lot of teams in our district have overlooked us. And uh, we've got a great group of seniors. We've got a great group of underclassmen, and they've just embraced that role and kind of taken it and run with it. And we, we feel like we're good enough to, to go win a playoff game, and, and we've never done that in school history. So that's kind of something that, that we're, uh, we're shooting for. All right. Thank you, Coach. All right, Jaden, we'll send it back to you in the studio. This update is sponsored by Bug Express. The other game tonight from that district, Ingram Moore and Baines. The Dragons win 43 to 21. So here we go. Here's the updated district standing. Sonora, the logo messed up there, but the Broncos are sitting tied with Grape Creek, 2-0 in district play. 
There we have Brady at one and one, Bangs at one and one also, and then Ballinger at 0 oh and two. Kind of a surprise considering those are the reigning district champs from last season. Next week we have Great Creek versus Brady, a way for the Bulldogs to bounce back. Send a message to Great Creek. Maybe Great Creek though can continue with the statement win off tonight, feed off that energy. Sonora taking on Brent Bangs, and then a battle of the two un or winless teams in the district, 0 oh and two. Ingram Moore and Ballinger, that one also next week. So, all right, let's hop over to 3A Division I for number one, Jim Ned versus Wall. Last season, this game determined the district champion, and more than likely, that would be the case again this season. Really, the question was, could the Hawks show, slow down Xavier Wishart and keep the Wall away from the Indians' offense? This was a chance for Wall to get revenge. The Indians ended their nine-year district title streak last season. Jim Ned's been riding a 20-game heater. Let's pick things up in the first. Jim Ned up 3-0. Hawks respond. That's Gabe Haskins muscling his way in for the early touchdown. And the Hawks are up front 7-3. Let's go to the second quarter now. Jim Ned with the ball. Tate Yardley rolling out and finds Tory Dorian in the end zone. Jim Ned regains the lead. And they wouldn't look back. Wall was in this game for a while, but things started to domino from this point forward. Here the fumble. Jim Ned recovered. That would lead to a touchdown for the Indians, and then they weren't done before the half. Xavier Wishart shows why he is so dangerous. Indians led 23 to 7 at the break, and they go on to get it. Their first win in Wall since 2008, 37 to 20, the final. Let's stay in 3-3A Division One. TLCA hosting Clyde. Both teams still looking for their first wins of the season. Things go the Bulldogs' Ray right from the get-go. Opening kickoff, action, fish on the return. Blockers in front of him, and let's just go high speed because he's going all the way for the kick return to open up this game. And Clyde was just going to get the scoring started. First TLCA play, the Eagles turn the ball over here. Sterling Harden trying to make a move, coughs up the football. The Bulldogs answer right back. Austin Hastings punches it in. They're up 13 to 0. Still over nine minutes to play in the first quarter. The next TLCA possession, Harding with it again. And again, the keeper comes loose. The Bulldogs hop on it. Everything going their way. And check this out. Let's dial up a little trickery. The reverse, Pedro Alamenaro comes racing around the corner. Bounces off an eagle for the touchdown. They made it 20-0. Bulldog and Clyde wins easily tonight, 61 to 22. Bulldogs picking up their first win of the season. The other game in that district, Breckenridge takes down early, 37 to 20. So here's a look at things after two weeks. Kind of a shocker, Jim Ned. Not really a shocker. I'm being sarcastic. They're sitting in first place, the only unbeaten team left in this district. And then from that point forward, we have a bit of a. Sh oh, actually, this is not the right updated version of the standings. Breckenridge is two and zero. They beat early tonight, which was a big surprise. Wall and early, or excuse me, and Clyde are tied for three and four. Brecken, or excuse me, Early is in fifth, and TLCA is in sixth at 0-2. Next week's games, TLCA gets Jim Ned, Wall versus Breckenridge, and Early takes on Clyde. All right, so 3A action is in the books. Coming up here on Inside the Game, we're going to dive into 2A. El Dorado is hosting Rock Springs tonight, along with other scores from across the area. We'll be back in just two minutes. Fansville is back, and everything has changed. College athletes can be in commercials now? Dr. Pepper, it's the one DJ deserves. Well, I want to be in a commercial. Will you make me the happiest fan alive? Coastal University? I thought we decided on state. No, that's what you decided. They don't even have football. The big day is finally upon us. Question is, will Jay and Natalie cross the goal line as one? The transfer portal. Wow. The legends are true. Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. When it comes to what's best in a mattress... Big ol' springs! Memory foam! Springs! Foam! Denver Mattress says, why not both? Introducing the Doctor's Choice Hybrid with the cooling full-body comfort of gel memory foam and individually wrapped coils featuring Boss technology. All packed in this easy-to-manage box. Choose from the luxury firm... Plush! 
and Eurotop. And rest easy knowing it's backed by our 365 night better sleep guarantee. The Doctor's Choice Hybrid, exclusively at Denver Mattress. Frontier's fiber optic gig service internet is here with upload speeds 12 times faster than cable. Finally, I can experience a humiliating loss to a 13 year old without lagging out. Finally, I can pull up, circle back, touch base, and unpack this. Finally, we can watch 4K videos of people who desperately want our approval. Do what cable can't with Frontier's gig service and our three year price guarantee for just $59.99 per month, plus a Visa reward card on us. She said she wasn't hungry. She only wanted a bite. But this isn't just a patty melt. This is a Whataburger patty melt. Good thing she's your other all-time favorite. Good thing there's the patty melt at Whataburger. Hi, I'm Mike with MGB, Mike's Gold Buyers. Gold and silver prices are terrific, which means more money for your gold, silver, and diamonds. Come to MGB and you'll say, I sold gold and I like Mike. On Avenue in by Angelo State. All right, let's drop down to 14 2A Division II. So far, El Dorado looks like the cream of the crop in this district. Tonight, the eighth-ranked Eagles welcomed Rock Springs to Larry Mitchell Stadium with the rival and a reigning district champs, Cristobal, looming next week. El Dorado is the only 11-man team still undefeated in the Concho Valley, and it's in large part because of their high-speed offense. But the defense gets things going right away. That's a recovery by Cooper Metter. And the Eagles have the football. Let's turn it into some offense now. Corbin Cobarubias rolling out, and he heaves it up. Look at this catch by James Kimball. Gets hit, and then he doesn't want to go down. Fighting his way for extra yardage. He's inside the 10, and then Kimball fittingly finishes it off. Keeps his footing, and the Eagles are on top 6-0 to early. And more offense from El Dorado because that's what this team does. Cooper Metter, the nice catch from the laser beam from Covert Rubiez. They led 13 to zero at the half, which was a surprise. Don't worry, El Dorado's averaging 54 points a game and they go on to get the win tonight, 53 to six. So how about Cristobal? We need them to win in order to make things interesting, at least from our standpoint, and they did. 53-0. to zero. The game actually ended at halftime due to a blown breaker out at Finley Field. And then Miles, they recover from last week's loss to El Dorado, dominating Junction, 49-7. to seven. Things not looking so hot for the Eagles early on. And here's the updated standings in that district. What everyone was kind of waiting on, El Dorado and Cristobal, could be playing for a district title again next week. Again, could is the key word. There's still three games left for every team in this district. But in the past, this one has decided the district championship at least the last three seasons. Miles and Menard right there in the mix for a playoff spot. Junction and Rock Springs on the outside looking in. All right, let's shift things over to 14-2A Division I. A battle of the two 1-0 teams in the district, Mason and Harper. The first points of the game are going to go to the punch and punchers. Ivan Wofford hands it to Jaden Scanton. He's in for the touchdown, 7-0 early for Mason. And they would continue to pour it on. Riley Todd takes, or Ryan Todd, excuse me, takes the handoff, hits the hole. Punchers up 13-0. They missed the extra point. It's not going to matter, though, because again, later on, still just in the first quarter, it's Todd, and he is speed, folks. In for the touchdown. Mason up 20 to 0 at that point, and they are going to roll past Harper 49 to 7. Mason stays perfect in district play. To Ozona, the Lions looking for their first district win. Center point in town trying to play spoilers. But guys, oh, Lions were on a mission tonight. First quarter, look at this run by Matthew De La Garza. Making two guys miss in the backfield and then breaks a tackle. And then he's free for the touchdown. Ozona is up 7-0 after the easy extra point attempt. And now let's go to the second quarter. Ozona just rolling. Pirates territory. Charles oh, Childress man, hits the rainbow it. throw to Max Everett. Made it 7-0, and now Lions not done in the first half. Hudson Fowler drops back and dials up for Everett for another touchdown. They led 33-0 at the break, and the Lions cruise 
tonight. 53 to 6, the final score. The other game from that district in action Johnson City takes down Brackettville 58 to 0. So there we go. Mason and Johnson City are the two teams at the top. And guess what? They play one another next week. Ozona gets Brackettville. Looks like Ozona has a chance to make some movement while Harper takes on center point and that rounds up that district and we're going to get into six-man football coming up right after this a big one the coke county rivalry water valley in action along with sterling city our two ranked teams but first let's check out this week's bowls fan camp update sponsored by Bug Express. At Deersky and Deersky Realtors, we know that buying or selling a home can be stressful. That's why we have assembled a team of agents that have over 250 years of combined real estate sales experience. You'll get personal service from a friendly and knowledgeable agent who understands the latest trends and market conditions for our area. Whether you're looking for commercial or residential, classic or modern, you'll find in-depth information that will help you find the perfect property to meet all your needs. At Deersky and Deersky, we realize you're not just looking for a house, you're looking for a home. The hardest part isn't saying goodbye to a child you've championed throughout his time in foster care. It isn't speaking up for his needs in court. It isn't working together with social workers and family members toward a common goal. It isn't learning how to advocate for a child and help him navigate the system. The hardest part is deciding to make a difference. Every child has a chance. It's you. Visit becomeacasa.org and sign up to become a volunteer. I'm Mike with MGB, Mike's Gold Buyers. Gold and silver prices are terrific, which means more money for your gold, silver, and diamonds. Come to MGB and you'll say, I sold gold and I like Mike. On Avenue in by Angelo State. Inside the Game on KSAN is your number one local high school football show. Highlights, score, and reaction from all of your favorite Concho Valley teams. All in one place. Watch Inside the Game every Friday at 11.35 p.m. on KSAN. Sponsored by Mitchell Automotive Group. I am a father and a husband, I'm a professional golfer, I'm a colon cancer survivor, and I fight because I want people to survive what they're going through and live long, happy lives. It's the second leading cause of death of any cancer, probably something most folks don't know, but it's, it's also one of the most treatable forms of cancer, so you can prevent this by proactively doing things about it, and many times you're going to find out that it's to be a lifesaver to do that. Town separated by 12 miles. That's the Coke County rivalry between Robert Lee and Bront. And tonight, for the 106th time, the seventh most in any series in the great state of Texas, they met on the gridiron tonight. Robert Lee has a one game advantage in the all time series. They've won four of the last five. So, could they keep it going? And they would strike first. Michael Munoz finds Ivan Escamilla in the end zone. Steers up 8-0 to zero after the extra point. Bront would respond, though. Jaden Gallivans scrambling around and hits Spencer Smith in the corner of the end zone. We are tied all at 8. To Longhorns looking to get in front. Gallivans, the quick throw, finds Brandon Bauman. The big man touchdown. How about that? 16-8 to eight the score at halftime. And Bront is going to get the win, which means we are all tied up in the series 51 apiece, and more importantly, Bronton getting the win, though. Sterling City on the road tonight. The Eagles pick up another Mercy Rule win. They scored five first-quarter touchdowns and didn't let up. Six different Sterling City players scoring in this one, 62-8, the final. Westbrook was on the bye, and here is the updated standing. Sterling City sitting in sole possession of first place with Westbrook looming around the corner. That game determined the district championship last year and likely probably again will be the case. Bront sitting there in second place or third place right now. Robert Lee in fourth followed by Highland in fifth place. Highland and Bront play next or Robert Lee play next week. Bront on the bye. All right, let's go to the other team in the 1A Division I ranked in the Concho Valley. And I'm talking about them Water Valley Wildcats. They were in very best tonight, trying to make it eight in a row. They've won five wins by Mercy Rule this season. And guys, I'm just going to tell you all, this one wasn't any different. Here, 
going right off the bat. Cannon Weiss taking the pitch, reversing field, and he's gone. Wildcats up to an 8-0 to lead. Cannon gets another toss, just shoves a kid down. Touchdown, Wildcats. They were running away with this one early, like I said here. The six-man option, Tread, Nathan Treadaway with the keeper. He's in the end zone. Water Valley continuing to roll. And how about one more, because why not? Chris Burleson takes the pitch, and he cuts back up field for another touchdown. Water Valley gets the mercy rule at half, 67-0. to They've now won 14 of their last 15 games. All right, the other one in 14-1A Division I, Erie County hosting Paint Rock. Disaster for the Tribe early. Erie County recovers the opening kickoff. And on the first play of offense, Trevin Cofill finds Bo Morrow for the opening score, 6-0 Hornets. And after a three and out, Hornets were back on offense. Kofel drops back to pass and just flips it out to Jordan Harrison. And he takes it in for a easy Erie County touchdown. They led 14-0 at that point. And the offense would continue to flow. Hornets moving the ball. Eli Davis just takes off with no one near him. He's going to score with ease. And how about a fourth touchdown? Isaac Dutch takes uh, the pitch and fights his way in the end zone. This one also ended at halftime. Erie County getting their first district win. Mercy rule style, 49-0. to zero. And so we take a look at the standings. Eden on the bye. And that matchup between Water Valley and Eden means something. And guess what? They're playing next week. So Water Valley sitting at 2-0 in first place. Erie, or Erie County in third place. And that would set up if Eden were to fall to Water Valley. That matchup like last year where Eden and Erie, or Eden and Erie County battling for the final playoff spot. But who knows? This district's still up for grabs. But if we're just going by precedent, that's how things were. Very best and Paint Rock play next week. Erie County is on the bye. District 6-1A Division 2. Blackwell beats down Abilene TLCA tonight. 60-0. start for the Hornets. And then Trent takes down Alton. 52-7. Let's look at the district standings for them. Blackwell in sole possession of first place. Lorraine was on the bye this week. Typically those two are the ones that play for a district title. That's not going to happen until the end of the year. Next week, we have Blackwell on a bye, Lorraine Holstein Olfen, while Trent and Abilene TLCA play one another. All right, so that's all of this week's action, but we still have, well, at least from the area, we have little Southwest Conference football to get into. The Central Bobcats were on the bye, but still made a big statement this week. All of the details coming up on that, along with highlights from the other six little Southwest Conference teams. Now, let's check out this week's Bulls fan cam. game is provided by Double Dave's Pizza Works. It's the home makeover sale at Furniture Row. And right now, the more you buy, the more you save. Save a hundred bucks on every thousand you spend. Plus five years no interest financing and free shipping. The home makeover sale on now at Furniture Row. Streamline your time online with the Concho Valley homepage app. Get your news and personalized weather faster and easier than ever before. And with live video and news alerts, you'll never miss a story. The Concho Valley homepage news app. Download it today. Battles aren't won solely on the field. Battles are won within. Over enemies of fear. Enemies of doubt. In that place where promises are kept. In the heart of every Marine, you'll find a promise. A promise of Battles One. All across America, there are kids going hungry. That sounds crazy, but it's real. It's also a problem you can fix. Kids who rely on school meals need help in the summer. That means neighborhood meal sites that are easy to get to and free for every kid. When you make breakfast part of a school day, a lot more kids get the chance to eat. These programs work. Over the past few years, one third fewer children in the United States are facing hunger. Change a child's life today by donating to No Kid Hungry. 
but everything looks clear. No ugly white spots in there. All gone. <laughs> it's the home makeover sale at Furniture Row. And right now, the more you buy, the more you save. Save 100 bucks on every thousand you spend. Plus five years no interest financing and free shipping. The home makeover sale, on now at Furniture Row. Time for some Little Southwest Conference football. Central might have been on a bye this week, but the Bobcats still managed to make some moves in District 26A. Let me explain. On Wednesday, an emergency hearing, the UIL State Executive Committee met and voted that friendship had to forfeit its 49 to 32 win over Central in week five due to an ineligible player not sitting out in the first half of the contest. And just like that, in a span of five days, the Cats went from last place in the district to tied for second with Permian entering tonight. So how did things go for the rest of the six Little Southwest Conference teams? Let's start with the Friendship Tigers trying to shake things off. They were hosting Abilene High tonight, and they get the scoring started. Their first possession, Chad Ferries, no one stopping him. He's been the monster this season. 7-0 Tigers, but Abilene High is going to answer back. Abel Ramirez swings it out, and that's Daniel Gerbhart who finds his way in for the touchdown. That tied it at 7, and then Abilene High is going to run away from this point. DeKean Thomas. Fights his way in for the touchdown. Abilene led 14 to 7 at that point, and they go on to get the win 48 to 28, the final over in Woolforth. So let's go to the next one. Midland Legacy out at Ratliff Stadium taking on Odessa High. After a fumble on their first possession, Rebels come right back. McKaylin Young punches it in from nine yards out. 7 0 Legacy, just like that. And they go back to Young inside the 10 yard line. They show off why they're the number one team in this district. 15 to 0 Rebels at that point, and they go on to get the big win tonight, 65 to 0 over Odessa High. And then the last game, Permian over in Midland, the battle of former coach Thad Fortune, at least the offensive coordinator here. Midland High strikes first. It's Jacob Vines in for the first touchdown of the game. But then Permian would answer right back on the ensuing possession. On the goal line, it's Rodney Hall who finishes it off with the touchdown. But Midland High still on top 7-6 to six because of a missed extra point. All right, after a punt from the Bulldogs, check out this run from Hall. He takes off and nothing but green grass in front of him. He's just short of the goal line. And on the very next play, the Mojo Panthers would punch it in, giving them a 13-7 to seven lead. And they're going to come away with the win tonight, 34 to 23. So let's see how things sit after four weeks of Little Southwest Conference football. Midland Legacy sitting at 3-0, sole possession of first place. Permian, sole possession of second place. Then we have Central and Abilene High tied for third place. And those are the four playoff teams as of right now. And that was, those were the four last season. But... Things are going to get interesting, and they can be interesting because Central still has to play those three teams, Abilene, Permian, and Legacy. Permian next week, the big rivalry out at Ratliff Stadium. They'll then have Legacy come here and end things on a Thursday night game with Abilene High, that classic rivalry all love. Midland High and Odessa High are still in the mix there, though. Mainly Midland High is the team, if you're a Bobcat fan, that you need to worry about because if Central loses out and Midland High were able to still win, then it could come down to a tiebreaker. Central owns that advantage, but things can always get jumbled up. Odessa High still in the mix as well. So let's not count anything out. It was a good week for the Bobcats, even though they were on the bye. Lakeview also, I didn't mention them. They were on the bye. They'll be starting district play on the road against Fort Stockton, the reigning district champions next week. We'll see if the Chiefs can bounce back from that loss to Hereford last week here at home. So both of our big schools for SAISD getting back in action. But big week for the Great Creek Eagles. I'd say they were the winners of this week. Congrats to them on beating Ballinger. As for that, week eight is in the books, and that means Inside the Game comes to an end. We'll see you next week for more high school football. Inside the Game is sponsored by Mitchell Automotive Group.